Paper weaving doesn't really take that many supplies, but you will need a few things. First off, you'll need your yarn. You will need a pair of scissors, a tape measure or a yardstick, a dowel rod or pencil, something to, to uh, secure your uh, your yarn to and then you'll need just something that you can attach that dowel rod to to hold your your uh, yarn as you as you weave. Optionally to hold your your uh, fem weaving you can just use a pillow and a, a large safety pin to pin your yarn. Um, some painters tape or masking tape any of these things will work. Okay so one of the first things you do when you start thinking about making a project, uh, whether it's a sash or, or uh, tabs or whatever, um, is you're going to pick your colors. Um, that's usually where people start is the colors that they want. So when you have your colors, then you need to decide how many of each strand, how many strands of each color are you going to want to use. Um, so there's several things to consider. The first is how wide do you want your project? So obviously if you're making garters or um, a, a strap for something, it's gonna be a lot more narrow than a man's uh, sash, for example. So you kind of need to know um, what width that you're aiming for. Um, and several factors go into that. Um, what size is your yarn? Are you using worsted weight? Are you using fingerling weight? Are you using chunky? Um, obviously the chunky is going to be bigger than the worsted and the fingerling. Uh, the fingerling is going to be the smallest. So um, the size of your or the weight of your um, yarn is going to affect the width. So the thicker or chunkier your yarn, the less strands you need to get to the width that, that you want. Um, you're also going to look at um, and some of this is going to be personal, is, is your personal weaving. Um, I know for, for me, I tend to weave very tightly. And so therefore, I know if I can see a pattern that somebody's made and they say so many strands equals three inches, well, I know those so many strands for me is probably only going to be about two and a half inches because I just tend to weave tight. And I know that through experience. And, and as you weave more, you'll, you'll, you'll kind of get a feel for... Um, for yours in comparison to somebody else's for the same number of strands. So, um, let's see. So we've got colors, you've got strands. Um, then you need to, you know, decide what pattern you're going to do. Um, kind of, you know, affects your, affects your, your finished project. So once you've decided what pattern and you've got your colors and you've kind of decided about how many strands you're going to need for the yarn that you have, for the width that you want, then we come to the layout phase. Now, the layout is going to make a huge difference in the look of your finished project. I have some samples here. They're all using the same number of strands and they're, they're red, yellow, and blue, and they all have the same number of yellow, they all have the same number of red, and they all have the same number of blue strands, yet all four samples are different. And there's even more ways than what I've done, but these are just a few. So first off, we have this one, where you have I have all of the color together. I have all the red, blue, then all the red, then the yellow, but I've used a technique called stippling as I changed the colors. So then I also have a section here where I have uh, three different layouts. And again, these have the same number of strands as the last one. And the first one I have is small, uh, three small stripes. Um, so I've got half of my red, then half of my blue, and then half of my yellow. <clears throat> and then I repeat that, half my red, half my blue, and half my yellow. So that makes solid uh, narrower stripes. The next example, is very similar to the first one, but I don't have the stippling. It strictly is all my blue, then all my yellow, and then all my red. And then the third example, example I have is, um, well, it's kind of divided up differently. I have half of my blue, and then I have two strands of yellow, and then I have half of my red, and then I have four strands of yellow, and then I have half my blue and two strands of yellow, half my red, and then four strands of yellow, and then the other half of my blue. So, um, as you can see in all four of these examples, the look is totally different. And so, 
Um, and really the look is almost infinite. There, I can think off the top of my head three or four more ways just immediately that doing the same pattern with the same number of strands, I could do them still differently. Um, so that makes a big difference in your layout. So how do you decide how you want to lay out your yarn? Um, one way I do, and I've, I know I've seen others do, is I will kind of sketch out the, the project that I want to make. In my, in my case, most of the time it's sashes. So I would stretch, kind of sketch out my sash and play with different uh, combinations. Um, so I might have three or four different um, layouts kind of, kind of um, just drawn out, kind of sketched out. Okay, so now we've decided what our colors are and how wide of a project we're going to do. And we've kind of talked about the layout, figured that out. Uh, one note I do want to make on the layout is you need to keep your strands to even numbers. So if you have three colors, then you might want 10, 10, and 10, or you might want uh, 10 of one, 16 of one, and and eight of another. They don't have to necessarily be the same number uh, of each color, but each color needs to have an even number. Unless, of course, in our first example where I had a little bit of that stippling or that where the colors alternated, um, that's created by having an odd number. Um, so unless you're wanting to go for that as a an accent in your project, then you'll want to stick with even numbers per um, per color. And a lot of the patterns, uh, as you learn or those patterns, you'll learn which ones some of them have to have. Most of them have to have even numbers uh, from color to color. So, okay, so we've got that. We've got our number of colors. We've got the number of strands per color, and we've kind of got our width. So now we need to figure out our length because um, we really can't cut our strands so we know how long we want to cut them. Um, for ease, typically what I have found works for me is I will take the, um, the waist measurement and add 10 to 12 inches uh, for the knot and a little bit of grow room possibly. So you need however long you want your weaving to be and I triple that. And then that doesn't really work with kids. Um, there's not enough, uh, it just doesn't give you enough. But if you're talking about an adult and a sash, then that's how I, I figure that it's quick and it's easy and it gives me pretty close um, to what I need. Sometimes a little bit extra, but I'd rather work with a little extra than be short. Um, there's actually a, a more precise formula that will work um, no matter what um, type of finishing you're doing or, or what size of, of uh, project you're doing. And um, it's a little more complicated, so um, if you're not a math person, you may not enjoy this part, but it will give you a pretty good, pretty accurate idea of how much you need for in length for your strands. So the formula is you need the waist measurement. Then you're going to take the waist measurement and add 10 inches for the tie. And then to that total, you're going to add 20% um, for weave allowance. As you weave and you're going, moving that strand from the, as a weft from one side to the other from outside in, you're pulling some up. So you need that extra weave allowance. <clears throat> and then once you have that, then you're going to add whatever length that you need for your finishing. Um, so um, if you're just doing the type of sash I do with the Chickasaw and you have the long braids and and um, and the pom-poms and you need to add about 50 inches total for um, for your sash so that's about 25 inches on either side for the braids and and the knots to tie them then that gives you this when you add all of that together that gives you the length of each that each strand needs to be um, so for example if I'm making a sash for someone with a 42 inch waist then I'm going to take that 42 and I'm going to add 10 inches of weaving or 10 inches of yarn for the tie. That gives me a total of 52 inches. Then I want to add my uh, weaving allowance. And when I add that, that's a, about 12 and a half inches. So when I add that in, that gives me, well, it's about 10 and a half inches. I'm sorry, it's about 10 and a half inches. So that gives me a total of 62 and a half inches that I need. So then if I add the 50 inches for the the braid and the knot. 
to the 62 and a half inches I have. That gives me a total strand length of 112 and a half inch uh, length. So if I were doing, I would kind of round it up 115, um, you know, 120 inches, something, just kind of round it up, whatever is easiest for you to, to um, you know, to measure out. That half inch sometimes is kind of weird to, to try and measure. So then I know each strand, I need each strand to be basically 100, and, let's round it to 115 inches. So if I need it to be 115 inches and I have three colors, let's say color A, the first color, I'm gonna have 10 strands in my sash of that color, then I'm gonna multiply that 112 inches by 10 because I need 10 strands of that length, which gives me um, 1,125 inches, um, which in yards is 31 and a quarter yards. So I need a little over 31 yards per uh, for color A. And then you would do that for color your second color and your third color and your fourth color, however many colors you have, and that will give you the yardage that you will need to make your project. We have our yarn, we've decided our pattern, we've decided our colors, we've got our length um, figured, and so now we're ready to cut the yarn. So there's actually several methods, really any method that will help you get the length of yarn that you need will be, uh, will work. Um, but some of the more popular ones are, this is called a warping board. And so this is a great help if you're by yourself. Um, and so we're gonna just, to use it, I'm gonna take my yarn. And let's say I figured out that I need about 150 inches uh, per strand. So I have on my board, I've already marked, I've written down my um, measurement so I don't even have to look. And I know 150 is pretty common length, so I make that uh, length a lot. So to do that, I'm gonna just attach my yarn here to this first strand, and then I'm gonna just, I'm gonna tie it on loosely so it kinda stays while I measure. And then I'm gonna just wrap it around each peg until I've wrapped around the peg that says, this one says 76. So I know that's gonna give me 152 inch. If I go around the peg and then back to the start, I now have a 150 inch strand. Once I've got the first one, I can just, I don't have to stop and cut. I can just continue to wrap around to give me as many strands as I want. It goes around. Then when I have all of the enough strands, so I can take this off and I will cut one end and that gives me my full length. Okay, another method of uh, measuring your yarn is using chairs. Obviously these are a lot closer than what you really would, would want, but you would just measure from the edge of the chair to the other edge. So if I needed, let's say these are, they're 29 inches apart. If I'm gonna wrap all the way around, I would wanna measure my, my distance all the way around. So let's say half of that is 46. So this is gonna give me a 92 inch uh, strand if I wrap and then cut at one end. So, which is not a bad length, that's a pretty good length uh, sash. So let's find the end of our yarn. And we're just gonna attach it. You can either uh, tape, let's see, we can tape it or you can tie it onto your chair, however you wanna do. So let's say I'm gonna tie this on right, tape that on right there. Actually, I wanna wrap it this direction. So let's go this, tape it this way. Okay, so I've got my yarn taped on and I'm gonna just wrap it around the chair all the way around like this. And so when I get back to there, there's one round. And so I can make it. So however many uh, strands I need, that's how many loops I'm gonna make. And then I'm gonna go back and cut it off where I started. All right, so 
if all else fails and you don't have anything to, to measure your yarn, uh, one method is a lot of fun, not necessarily um, very accurate, but <laughs> you can always grab your children or your grandkids and have them help. All right, stand right there. Coda, stand right. Is that? So you would measure the distance that you need between them. Let's see, how far are you? You are 42 inches apart. All right. Wow. Arm here. Stand still. Arm up. Arm up. And we're going to stick this on your thumb. <gasps> So you have one round. Go oh, arm up. Two. Woo. Let go of that. Let go of that. There you go. Two rounds. Why are you stooping this? Hey, arm up. See, it's not real um, quick. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> need it to be very accurate. <laughs> That's funny, funny, funny. Oh, you boys are funny, funny, funny. Okay, so once you've got your strands cut to the length that you need, if you're doing a project, uh, you need to be sure and leave uh, space. We're going to load this onto the head stick. So you need to leave space, enough strand, enough yarn um, between the end and the head stick so that you can finish off. If you're doing a sash and you have um, braids or tassels, you need to be sure and leave that. I'm just doing a demonstration uh, sample today, so it really doesn't matter. I don't need to leave a whole lot. So if you're just learning and you're practicing, you don't need to leave a lot of space. So I've just knotted my yarn together. And we're going to load it on the on the the stick head stick. Now there are about I've seen at least three different ways of using head sticks. Either I use one, I've seen people use two, I've seen people use three, and that really doesn't matter which method of that you use. Um, all this is is going to hold your piece. It doesn't actually affect your woven piece. So. I'm going to just show you the method that I learned, and, um, and then we'll get going. So to start off, we're going to take your head stick, and we're going to take our yarn, and the first strand, after you've just kind of decided what order you want your yarn to be in color-wise, I'm going to take the first one, and I'm going to wrap, take it above the head stick, wrap it around and back over so that the end of the thread, the long thread, is coming from the top of the head stick. Then I'm going to take the next yarn strand that I want, and I'm going to come from the bottom, wrap it away from me, and back on so that the, the yarn comes from the bottom of the head stick. And then you're going to alternate all the way across. So the third strand is going to come from the top, around, and back across the top. The fourth one is going to come from the bottom and it's going to go around the top away from you and back from the bottom and then the top and around and then from the bottom and around and you just do that all the way across alternating from the top and the bottom. So in my project, I'm going to have all my yellow together and then all my blue together and all my red together. So I'm going to load it in that order. All of my yellows are going to go first, alternating coming around the top or coming up from the bottom. As we go around. All right, that comes from the top. All right, so I have all the yellow or my first color on. So I'm going to get the second one this blue, and I'm going to keep, just keep going. The last yellow came across, looks like the top, so the next one I'm going to come up from the bottom. Just keep it in the same order. The color of the yarn does not affect the um, alternating of over, under, over, under from wrapping the stick. So we're just going to wrap it, alternating coming across the top and around or up from the bottom and around. 
And then when you finish the second color, I've got just a couple more, then we'll do the same for the third color. Let's see if I can kind of keep that out of my way. Then once you get all the way to the end, alternating, wrapping from the top and wrapping from the bottom, we will be ready to weave. So once I have all of my yarn loaded on the head stick, we're just going to attach it to something. You can use a tabletop, you can use a ladder back chair, you can use, which is what I learned on traditionally, um, but I had five kids who always seemed to go sit in my chair and play with my project, so that was out. And my husband found this, it's just an embroidery, uh, standing embroidery hoop, so that's what I use. Um, it's adjustable so no matter what chair I'm in I can raise it or lower it um, to whatever height I want it. Um, I can change the angle on it if I want to sit back or sit forward or whatever so it's worked well for me. So I'm going to just use blue painter tape here and glue my glue tape my head stick on so that it stays put and I'm ready to weave. <laughs> 